I've been doing all my aesthetic design in ceramics and leaving the plastic 3D printer to create functional insets. So for example, on this lamp, the insert that holds the lamp in place in plastic, then I've got a ceramic lid that goes on the top. But I was interested in, can I use the same techniques I was using for 3D printing the ceramics to add texture to plastic components as well? So I've been experimenting with patterns from very chaotic to quite controlled woven pattern on the top but then I've got a screw thread connected to it so that I can screw it onto the lamp. To make working on these designs easier, I've created a start file that has everything set up. Scene collection with helpers that gives me the build volume of the print area and it gives me a nozzle that I can use just to check the clearance if I'm doing non-planar layers. What makes it a lot faster to use is I've got two objects, G-code base generator and a G-code wall generator. It will help me automatically create a base for my design and then the wall generator will let me create a wall. I can set up the basics of my lamp or whatever I'm making without having to import, import G-code first. And then when I want it to sculpt, and it'll appear directly on my design. This means I can fiddle with what I'm working on much faster. I put this file on my Patreon as a way of thanking people who are willing to help me out while I'm running this channel. So if you want to have a go with this start file, um, you can head over to the Patreon and subscribe. There's more detailed videos on how to use this file and download link that means you can try it out for yourself. Something I've really enjoyed about playing with plastic as well as ceramics is plastic will go hard much quicker. The overhang of this shape is impossible to do if you're printing in ceramic. It would just collapse but on this create the shape I was intending. When I'm creating loop patterns in the plastic parts, I can get away with a much more extreme pattern if I keep the loops folding back with themselves along a vertical line. So for example, this one here comes out here and crosses there and comes back. But this next one above it continues along, continues along, but then it crosses out here and they overlap. And the line above that also comes along here and loops there. So they're looping in different places. One thing in common that they meet along that point and along that point, which means no matter where this loop falls, wherever gravity pulls it, there'll always be a point where it comes back to keep its shape. So what I want to do next, I wanted to add my sculpting part. So first of all, if I open this one component, save as an STL file, open that part. So then once I've opened it up in Bamboo Studio, I want to double check its location. Make sure it's right in the center of the build bed, so I'll put it at 90 and 90. Because of this overhang, I may need to make sure that support is on, so I'll leave, leave support on and slice it. And I've got the base ready to print. Then what I want to do is export the G-code. What I want to do then is use Nozzle Boss to import the G-code. And there it is on the center. Move my sculpt in the Z direction. And while holding control, snap it to the top. Now it's exactly located on the top of the G code that I've imported. So now I can be sure that one part will print exactly on top of the other. Duplicate it so I can, don't have to edit the original. So what I need to do now is I need to apply the surface deform modifier, apply location, and it set its location to the zero zero position on the build plate. And so its offset is now exactly above the mechanical 3D print that I've made for the base. Now they're lined up properly and it's gonna print um, on top of each other in the correct position. What I can't do is then just combine these and let it print. Importing complex G-code that's got a lot of travel, different infill and doesn't work very well in Blender. Uh, really, the nozzle boss is only designed for importing in spiralized outside contour. It's not much use for a complex G-code like this because it strips it of data. It only really includes the, the position of each point that it travels to. So this is just a lot of travel movements with extrusions and then it doesn't really differentiate between an extruder move and a travel move or an infill move or anything like that. They're all treated roughly the same as each other, I think. So I want to add this to the start of the G-code when I export it. So instead of joining these two files together, what I can do is I can go back to the original file, plastic mount with screw, I then open up the G-code. Okay, oh, it's quite easily, quite clearly marked. If I select everything up to the white end and copy that in Blender, you can add homing and purging that you'd normally want to put at the beginning of any print. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to put this entire print. So I've got a little line here that says it's the end of the base. And then afterwards it sets the extruder to relative mode because that's what I need to have to print this properly. So then if I just paste all of that, all the G codes that I from the slicer that I used to make this paste it into the document until this point. So it's going to start its own slicing only after it gets to this point. What I realize when you're um, exporting to Bamboo Labs is that you need to make sure that there is no text here to switch on the T0 and T1. T0 and T1 are used to 
as tool changes, but you don't want to trigger a tool change. So you need to make sure on T1 and T0 you comment out that line entirely so it no longer go, runs that command. And you have that. so you've pasted all your code in right the way down to the final wipe end. And then at the end of the code, what I've added is I've added a little offset at the end of its print. So it just moves the nozzle away from the printer because I realized sometimes it was crashing if I didn't do that. Everything else is the end of the code from the slicer. It will still perform all the G code that the slicer is, is wants to send to the printer. Apply or delete all the geometry nodes that I was using to create this. And go over to the nozzle bar, extrusion speed 75, probably is okay, maybe I'll reduce it down a bit. And nozzle boss, uh, nozzle size is basically telling you the line width. So I put a 0.7 nozzle because I want this to be pretty chunky. Export the G code, there it is, all ready to print. So I've got my sculpted and manipulated G code from Blender placed on top of a mechanical 3D print that I created in SOLIDWORKS and then sliced in Bamboo Labs. I decided to print a plastic base. The base is simply using a fuzzy skin setting on the printer, but then applying it just to the outside surface. I've also not applied the fuzzy skin to the screw thread, so those parts can still screw together nicely. It's very satisfying to be able to control the 3D printer to create multiple effects using the same material, using it both to create aesthetic surfaces and functional threads all in one piece.